the Steel MS170, over 20 years in its product lifestyle and still out there cutting wood, cutting wood for people every day, a proven winner. This saw comes in at under nine pounds, puts out 1.7 horse and runs a 16 inch bar and chain. What do we need to know? You bought this, you got this home and you're gonna go to work with it. We're gonna go over some of the basics that you need to know today to get the most out of this saw and avoid some of the frustrations that can happen with owning a chainsaw. Go back, look at our video library. I did a, a video series a while back that talked about kind of the five key things that people do to a chainsaw to, to hate their chainsaw. I think I used that word. They, how you can not like your chainsaw. And I used a 170 and it was really kind of fun to beat up on this saw and it took a lot of abuse to kill it. We don't want you to do that. We want you to have a good life with this chainsaw and get the most out of it. Before we get into it, let's talk about some safety stuff. It is a chainsaw. They are loud. They, they believe it or not, they're dangerous. So let's protect our ears and our eyes with a nice steel Promark or X-Vent helmet system. We got our face protection. We got our ear protection. We got our fall protection from branches coming down. And then also some chaps. This is where most injuries happen is on the lower legs, guys. And we want to avoid that. Chaps are the trick every year. I get a few bloody pictures, ew, because people were not wearing their chaps. And I don't, do not like to see that, so. Okay, let's start out with basics beyond kind of the safety. Let's start up off with kind of chain tensioning. Why am I starting here? I don't know, I just, I'm gonna go here. This is something that every week people come in and their chain is hanging off the saw and it's damaged. And they go, well, I was just cutting some wood and the chain jumped off. Well, why did the chain jump off? There's a few primary reasons. The biggest one is when I'm cutting multiple items and my chain's running a little bit loose and I'm cutting, say, branches that are overlapped like that and each of those branches is pulling this chain a little bit different direction. That all of a sudden causes this chain to jump off and when it comes off at full speed, it damages the drivers of the chain and it will not go back in the bar groove. So let's put this chain on here. Let's take it all the way off and let's put it on and then let's tension this chain and hopefully we can avoid you having that happen. A chain is always gonna stretch. So if you take this brand new chainsaw home and you start cutting, within the first five minutes or so, you are going to need to tension the chain. So let's go, let's put the bar and chain on. Bar is gonna go on like this. Before we put it on, you see that little hole right there? See it? There's one on the other side too. That hole lines up with this groove right here. That's where my bar oil comes out of, okay? We'll get to bar oil in a minute. My bar oil comes out of there, it goes into this hole, the chain, those holes in the chain, pick that oil up and they carry that oil all the way around to the tip of the bar. That is the lubrication. These things are running fast, there's heat, there's friction, we need to lubricate so as to avoid damage to the bar and chain and actually seizing the bar and chain together. If you don't have any oil, things are gonna seize up and bind up very quickly. Okay, hold the chain like so. I usually put it on the sprocket in the back, put it in the top groove, walk it out to the tip and chain on. Now you'll look, here's mistake number one. See how the chain on the back is not in the bar groove? See how it's kind of above? I'm actually gonna need to push down and get it in there like so, making sure it's on the chain adjuster pin. Now I'm gonna very lightly hand tighten the bar nuts. So cover goes on, hand tighten. If I can get my fingers to work, wow, they're not going. Time for coffee. Okay. Bar nuts are hand tightened. You'll notice this chain has some slack in it. How do we take that out? On the MS-170, there's a screw right here in the front. Flathead screw, my bar wrench is going to tighten that up. So as I turn it clockwise, I want you to pay attention to this. See that, that gap? As I turn this clockwise, that gap is going to go away. It's gone. So what I normally do is, with my screwdriver in this place, I hold up on the back of the chainsaw, so the tip of the bar, that shows that I still have some slack, and I tighten the screw 
until the bar makes contact or the chain makes contact with the bar. Now, while still in that position, I take my bar wrench and I tighten the bar nuts the rest of the way up. That's how I do it. It works very well. It seems to get me the proper chain tension that I need to avoid having a chain jump off and cause problems. Now again, a brand new chain is gonna stretch as I use it. So pay attention, after I've done five, 10 cuts, take a peek, how's it looking? Maybe shut the saw off, actually come touch that chain, see how it is. One important thing is before we go to work with it, let's take our bar wrench and spin this chain, make sure the resistance is good and make sure that it was on the back sprocket properly. Talked about bar oil. Here's bar oil. We can get this in all kinds of different flavors and sizes and that sort of, not flavors, don't test it, okay? We can get the platinum stuff, we can get the woodcutter stuff, we can get the bio stuff if we're cutting over sensitive areas. Bar oil is gonna go in this front tank and every time I fill the fuel, I'm going to fill the bar oil. When it comes to fuel, I'm gonna run the steel HP Ultra mixed with a gallon of gas or I'm gonna run the steel moto mix. Personally, on most of the chainsaws in my shop, I'm running moto mix, because a chainsaw I use so infrequently. I know when the season comes, I'm gonna be running this hard, so if I have a Saturday of wood cutting, I'm gonna run my normal mix fuel, but after that, I'm gonna put in my moto mix, because I may not be touching this thing again for several months. Okay, filling up the bar oil, then filling up the mix oil, that's gonna allow me to get to the point of starting. Before doing that, I'm gonna put my chaps on, I'm gonna have my safety gear, I'm gonna have everything ready to go. I'm gonna pop the brake on like that. The brake on, what do you mean the brake on? We'll check it out. Brake off. See how that chain spins? When this lever goes forward, click, that chain will not spin now. That's a safety device. So as I'm cutting, and if I do something wrong and this saw comes up, bam, brake stops chain, stops damage. A little scary, if you've had it happen, you know what I'm talking about. If a chainsaw kicks back at you, it's a little scary. It shouldn't happen, that means you've done something wrong, but accidents do happen, so just take the safety precautions. I always set the brake before I start it, I then squeeze the trigger, I go all the way down to choke. There's four notches here. I've got off, run, start, and choke. So O, I, half choke and choke. Can you see those all right? So let's just name them one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm gonna squeeze. Let's start this over so you can watch it. It's in the off position. I grab it off the shelf, I set the brake, I squeeze the trigger, I push it all the way down to position number four. Okay, this is where I'm gonna pull the rope. I'm gonna pull the rope generally two or three times and it's going to pop. Never, 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 I know that's a lot, Never pull more than four times. Very, very rarely do I see that have to happen. Two or three pulls, it's gonna pop, it's gonna fire, but not much. It's gonna be like a boom, that's it. It's not gonna be like vroom, I'm ready to go to work. No, it's just gonna be a little boom. We call it the pop, some people call it the fart, the sputter, whatever. When that little pop happens, we then come up to position three. This is where it's gonna start. And if I've done everything right, it's gonna start on the first pull. If it takes two pulls, that means you probably gave it one pull extra on that bottom, that number four or choke position. As soon as it starts, I take my hand and I squeeze the trigger and watch what happens to this lever. Pops up to the idle position, okay? So now we don't have resistance, nothing's happening, it's just idling, getting ready. Why do I need to pop it up to the idle? Because when it's in position three, the throttle is locked and this engine is at a full speed trying to push this chain. And remember we have the chain brake on, so I'm really, I'm just roasting the clutch. I'm heating things up and that's not good. It takes a while. I mean, it took like over a minute for me to do that when I tried to wreck a chainsaw. I don't want you to do that. So squeeze the trigger, returns to idle. We're safe, we're ready. We take the brake off and we're ready to go to action and make some cutting. Okay, what's under the hood? This quarter turn, put the throttle lever all the way down, lift up and off it slides and we'll see that we have our air filter, 
and our spark plug as well as really the whole top of the engine. Not a bad idea if you have compressed air to just blow this whole area out, keep it free of debris, wash that filter once in a while, and then change this spark plug probably once every year or two as a homeowner. Cannot hurt at all. Pop this cover back on. So fuel, bar oil, safety, don't flood it, chain tension, brake. We've gone over a lot of things and I think I've done a pretty good job, but it's never a bad idea to refer to your owner's manual. Or stop by Carl's Mower and Saw. We've been selling steel chainsaws for well over 20 years. We have plenty of operators on staff that understand what can happen and can cause frustration. Let us help make your steel MS-170 chainsaw owner experience the best it can be. We will see you soon.